Hello and welcome back everyone to another video and in this one we'll be taking a look at this thing. Um, it's the 86 Duino um, Edu Cake. So if you've watched my videos for the last few years you know that I kind of like obscure x86 hardware and it all started with the weird um, Via motherboard I bought some time ago and actually my obsession started with from the time I found out there's other people making x86 hardware other than AMD and Intel. So I've been um, after some of them and this is a very good example of that. This is um, educational development board but it runs on x86 hardware. Um, it has a Vortex x86 DX, Vortex 86 DX, CPU we'll talk about a bit, um, a COM port or 100 megabit LAN port power from from micro USB you can do other thing I think there's one com port over that as well and then an on off switch uh, a lot of GPIO pins and all the other GPIO -ish things um, your serial I squared C and analog input and output all exposed over GPIO a couple of USB ports headphone jack microphone jack and full size SD card slot there's no video port on this, which was my biggest disappointment and also one of the pain points of this hardware is like it's a full-blown x86 system, it can boot Linux um, and, and or DOS and there's no video port. If they would have just added a video port on this, it would have been one of the perfect like mini DOS uh, gaming machines, but it's not there. Uh, as for the specs, it has no internal, it has little bit of flash internal storage few megabytes uh, mostly for bios and there's like some arduino ish um free toss based arduino compatibility layer that can run arduino code on this hardware which is the way it's meant to be used uh, but that said there's all of the storage is either supposed to be over usb or sd card slot uh, so let's open it up uh, and i'll tell you a bit more about the vortex processor when we get to it um, the build is really nice. It's all metal and it was not as expensive like if you go on eBay and search for Vortex 86 and the boards that the industrial boards that come around are like really expensive. Um, this was not this was around less than 60 USD. Hopefully um, at least for me um, it might be different where you live probably cheaper and uh, what comes out first I forget. Um, I think this thing slides out. Yeah, it's on this weird like header thing uh, that's supposed to slide out. I hope I don't break anything. Uh, I mean, I have opened it up before, but just a very sketchy build. Right, so this is the inside, at least a part of it. Um, all of this is just protection for the GPIOs, like that's it. And I think it's messing up with a few of my um, serial connections that I tried, but it's just a bunch of protections right, that you don't fry the actual mainboard um, by mistake. Like that's that's all all of this is. Um, There's a whole lot of protection circuit. Um, yeah, so this is mostly uh, mostly passive i don't think there's any active logic going on um for the gpio everything else is exposed to those headers that goes to this plate right here cr uh oh i don't know why i said b i think that's a super cap br2032 i don't know why it says br maybe i'm wrong maybe it's not a super cap maybe it's uh lithium battery but it says br so i'm a bit sus and it's all um uh, like weld it down so anyways that's for the clock um there is your networking stuff i think that's audio that's for serial um because it's like proper serial serial port rs232 uh so you need like a, i think that's a max chip or you know so something else not the max one and you have your usb ports here your audio jack your audio circuitry uh, I think there were more screws or maybe not. Yep, you need to open open this. Um, the serial port uh, screws to it to completely um, break free of the shell. I 
think that's the boot ROM, like with the boot flash and everything. Oh, I'm sorry, the um, bias. It's on that EEPROM. And let's open it up further. This one was tricky before and it's tricky now. There we go. So a little bit of heat uh, thermal pad. Um, not sure if it's really needed, but it's always good to have. It's an x86 CPU, although it's really, really slow. I think it's running at like 300 megahertz or something. And here's the rest of it. So the power switch, the micro USB, the x86 SOM, um, your power LED indicator and the um, full size SD cards, a lot, a lot of QC pass stickers everywhere. So as you can see, the way it's built is you have your uh, main board on a SOM and that's why it's called a cake. There's a SOM, there's a like intermediary board and then there's this thing that goes on top so it's you know like a can you could have called it a sandwich they chose to call it a cake eh. so um the SOM itself is interesting because uh it lets us expose a lot more from the actual cpu that's um not exposed on the ios right here so this is the SOM. It's a uh, Vertex uh, X86EX. I, I don't know why I remembered it was an SX. Um, yeah, so this one has floating point unit, so it's not dead slow. And that's the 128 uh, megabytes of RAM. Uh, another, I think that's the boot ROM flash there. And what's on here, I believe now, is the little bit of storage I told you that's running the... Um, uh, free RTOS plus Arduino stack. Um, there's JTAG right there in case you wanted to do something else um, and, and probe into the CPU. So the fun part about these uh, 86EXs are these are 486 cores. So these are Intel 486 cores. These, these are licensed. But they have, um, I don't think the design is licensed, just the ISA is. Uh, and so I think they've modernized a bit. It's an out of order for its six core. Um, I don't know if the original one was, uh, but they also claim like, but they add, add like all modern peripherals to it. So you have USB on the sock you have, and it's a proper sock. You have SATA on the sock, you have USB on the sock, you have PCIe on the sock. So everything's integrated. There's no South Bridge situation going on. There's no North Bridge situation. It's all integrated into uh, one package, like uh, a regular embedded ARM device. So um, the fun part is that these pinouts actually expose SATA and PCIe. Now, I think the SATA ports are being reused on the GPIO pins for the things but the PCIe pins are not technically connected. So they don't, they are here, but they are not buggered off to other parts of the um, PCB. So one of the ideas I had when I bought this and I realized it doesn't have a VGA port and I thought it was a VGA, it was a serial port. I like, I saw a Vortex X86 on cheap, I bought it. That's, the, that's why I have it. Um, but, uh yeah so the idea for me at least is to still use this main board to deliver the power have the boot drive have the networking have the usb etc but to expose of um pcie pins from here using wires and an external pcb to an external pci bracket like the ones you use for getting graphics card run on arm devices or uh, m.2 slots so that's the idea for for this project currently um, i don't in, really intend to use it for um, anything else uh, once we have pcie we can have a graphics card can do video and then we'll see if redos works how well it works um, i don't think there's ps2 ports or anything but if if i were to take this board and create my own baseboard which isn't that difficult because a lot of the things you need are on the baseboard itself um you have usb directly out you have 
um a lot of the, all the voltages you can just send 1.8 volts and a separate 3.3 volts and a separate 5 volt and it will boot um you don't need special power circuitry and SATA is all exposed over the pins everything it's it's a proper SOM so all of this circuitry is just protection and uh, all right so audio is through the DAC it doesn't have that on on build or the codec is not on no the audio chip is not on the uh, um on the SOM but uh, apart from that everything else is so that was the idea to basically try and uh, like I see a buzzer here right now, but not during any of the boot processes. It has never buzzed. It's never given that bias beep. It's never done anything like that. So it's it's a uh, yeah. I don't know why they have it here. Maybe it's just a thing that you can run a code and make it beep and blah blah blah. So that was it for this video. Um, just wanted to show the hardware that I have on hand, and you, there might be more videos like this. I have a lot of hardware not too much time to play with the software when i can i will make those videos as well so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all in the next one